Welcome to this course on textile finishing. As we had mentioned in the introductory uh, video also that we would definitely look into the chemistry and then its application particularly technological application which has led to many treatments and finishing processes. So, uh, broadly what are we going to cover? I will just take a few minutes to just explain in this whole course some of the topics that we will be covering. Obviously, we will have some time we shall spend on introduction as to what the finishing is. Generally, how do we classify these finishes? in terms of mechanical and chemical finishes, this is what we are going to be uh, working on. Uh, within the special or specific finishes, uh, we will have wrinkle resist finishes, what is the need, the general approach for obtaining a wash and wear finishing. In within this topic, we will try to see what kind of agents like cross-linking agents which are used for obtaining a wrinkle resist finish, the catalysts that are needed to complete the reaction, the process and the characterization of a finished fabric. Further, we will go and talk about stiffeners and softeners, their principle and the chemistry of these compounds. Uh, that will be interesting to see. We will also talk about waterproof, water repellent and waterproof breathable finishes, how they are generally done. In brief, we will be talking about it. Some of the chemistry will also come into picture. Another important uh, finish which we call as a fire retardant or fire retardant finishing, we will see how it is done, what are the principles and a technology that is used. More topics, antimicrobial finishing, biopolishing, they are basically enzyme based uh, finishing as the biopolishing is concerned and how bacterial degradation takes place and if you want to uh, avoid growth of bacteria, what are we going to do about it. Soil repellency and soil release, this is an important uh, topic of finish these days. So, we will spend some time here as well. Then the other material that we have uh, wool, so something specially related to wool, uh, milling, setting, shrink resistant finishing, some special finishing for silk as well we will cover. We will also spend some time on uh, topics related to energy management and technologies which are more energy efficient. Interesting in this will be low liquor application and foam finishing. Finishing of synthetic fabrics, uh, some of the important things we call the heat setting, uh, anti-static and other special finishing required for synthetics also will be covered in this course. And some discussions on uh, mangles, dryers, stenters and some mechanical finishing processes including sanferization. So, all these topics will be covered not exactly in the same order, you know. Sometimes some of the machines like a mangle may be discussed before, so that it makes sense. Uh, some finishes may be done at a later stage. So, but briefly this describes as to what we are going to be covering in this course. So, we come to the first lecture what we are going to do today. 
giving an introduction to finishing is a general lecture and therefore would demand attention only to the extent the broadness of the topics that we are talking about. So what we shall learn today is the need for finishing and general types of finishing processes that are used in the industry today. So let us uh, look at what we know about textile fibers and fabrics. As we mentioned uh, in, in earlier little discussion is that the chemistry of the fibers will determine as to why a certain type of finish is required. So let us say we generally remember, recall from our earlier courses that you may have done, uh, what are the important textile fibers, fabrics or fabrics made from them. Do you remember them? Can you recall some of the fibers and fabrics? Yeah. Cotton, of course. Cotton is one of the most important fiber which is used in making all kinds of apparel and even uh, industrial household textiles. So it is an important fiber. Viscose is another fiber. What is the difference between these two fibers? So one of them is called the manufactured fiber which is called the viscose and the cotton is a natural fiber and what is common in them? The common part is both are cellulosics. Then you may have heard of fibers like acetate or triacetate. How are they made? What is the basic raw material? the polymer, are they natural or manufactured? Natural or manufactured? Yes, they are manufactured, but how? The basic material is cellulose, the cellulose is modified, acetylated, so you make acetates or triacetate where all the hydroxyl groups have been substituted then becomes triacetate if you look at it from the anhydroglucose unit. You know anhydroglucose units would have three hydroxyl groups, one primary and uh, the two secondary hydroxyl groups. So if you replace them completely by an acetate then you will have a triacetate. Is this triacetate a thermoplastic fiber or non-thermoplastic fiber? Yeah. Non-thermoplastic or thermoplastic? Is it not thermoplastic? No. A, these are thermoplastic fibers because the reason why cotton cellulose is non thermoplastic that reason which is the intermolecular hydrogen bonding that reason has been basically removed by substituting acetate groups. So then you have wool interesting natural fiber, silk another interesting natural fiber. So we are talked about natural which are wool, silk, cotton, manufactured fibers like viscose which is regenerated, acetate and triacetate which are modified. Any one of them is synthetic among the fibers that we have listed here? What do you say? Anyone? 
among these is in the synthetic category? No. So, we have other fibers which are important which are the polyester which is the polyethylene terphthalate because if you just talk about polyester there are many types of polyesters will be there. Then other commercially successful fiber is nylon, nylon 66 or nylon 6. So, these are two important commercial fibers otherwise there are many other nylon that are also available. Polyacrylonitrile, if you remember this fiber has more or less been used as a substitute for wool. If you remember this is good otherwise try and find out why polyacrylonitrile in a barrel industry or a parallel sector is considered as a substitute for wool. Polypropylene another interesting fiber which is less used for apparel maybe for household more industrial application is used much more. All these fibers which are listed here are called synthetics, synthetic fibers. Why do we call them synthetic fibers? Because their backbone that is the polymer chain does not exist in nature and it has to be synthesized by using compounds called monomers. So, you have monomers which have to be reacted to make them polymers and therefore, they are called synthetics. Invariably, they are all in the range of or in the class of thermoplastics. So, these are some of the important fibers which you will be coming across every day. Well, there are other category of the fiber which is called the high performance fiber which are like Nomex, Kevlar. The difference between this they are also known as polyamides. polyamides all right and these are called aramids they are aromatic amides so they have aromatic ring in the thing and while these nylons don't have so they are simply in the class of polyamide these are called the aramids they are high performance invariably we may be using them only in special applications, but not in the day to day applications. So, where do we stand? If somebody asks is the chemistry of these fibers different? Is it different? Yes, of course, it is different. Whether this difference in the chemistry is going to affect their performance characteristics like some of them are thermoplastic, some of them are non thermoplastics, some of them may be biodegradable, some of them may not be biodegradable. Will it depend on this chemistry of these fibers? Yes, of course. Let us see some of these fibers and uh, that difference probably is going to become a basis as to why a particular type of finishing process is required for some fibers and the other required for the other fibers. So, when we talk about requirements then we let us say we look at the advantages limitations of, of these fibers and the fabrics made out of them also not just the fibers. So, what does it come to your mind? The most important fiber that comes to your mind is cotton, the king is it is called and we just talked about its chemical structure. What is the chemical structure? Right? It is cellulose. So, what is 
cellulose, I am sure you will either remember or go back and check it out. So, it is a cellulose based structure. So, what are the advantages of a cotton? Yeah. You say that the advantage, what is the advantage? Well, it absorbs moisture, is a hydrophilic fiber and water can be retained more. So, a large number of people would have come to a conclusion, they did, that all materials, garments made from the cotton should be next to the skin, so that any moisture that is absorbed, is, which is secreted out, gets absorbed easily, right. That is why you like to have cotton near to your skin. But this may not really be an advantage today, because if it absorbs more moisture, it dries also slowly. So, suppose an athlete is running with all cotton things where he is wearing or she is wearing, then the perspiration will be there, it will be all wet and how, how do you think you will like a wet material clinging to your skin and a body? I do not know. Would you like to consider this as an advantage? What else? It can be dyed easily because normally we want to dye in aqueous medium. If water gets absorbed more, then the dye also goes. It can be printed relatively easily, can be chemically treated also easily. Yes, this advantage could be there, but that is a process advantage. What about the advantage of the user? Is the user interested how did you dye? Is the user interested how did you print? or finish. What user will be interested? What is the property that he or she is experiencing because of the textiles that he has or he has been wearing? What about creasing? When you have any textile garment that you are wearing, it creases, right? It does crease. So, does the cotton based fabric crease more? or less, more or less, they crease more. Have you experienced it or not? They crease. Do you like the creased material or creased garment being worn? Some of you can. Most of people would like to have a garment which does not crease. So, this is a limitation. What about burning? Have you ever seen any cellulose paper being burnt? Does it burn readily? It does burn readily. The cotton also will burn very easily. So, all cotton garments, household material, if there is a fire, that is the most dangerous thing that you can experience. So, this is a limitation. Biodegradability. If suppose you keep any cotton based garment material, let us say in the soil or keep it unwashed for a long period, what would happen? You know, you will have fungus or rot growing on it and at the end, it will get degraded also. Because in nature, we have an enzyme called cellulase. So, it can degrade cellulose and cotton is cellulose, so it gets degraded. So, is it an advantage or a limitation? For some, obviously, it is a limitation. In modern world, somebody say it is an advantage also. Why? Because at the end of the life of a product, you have to dispose this. And when you dispose any such product, then we expect that it will biodegrade itself will not have to be incinerated or burnt out or do something. So, from environmental point of view, it may be an advantage from 
longevity point of view, it may not be that much of an advantage. So, all that is there, you have the cotton. Water repellency, soil repellency, what do you think about it? It absorbs water, so it cannot repel water, so they are against. So, in case you are interested in repellency of water, then obviously you have to say that it is a limitation in that sense. And same is something related in soil repellency, who wants the fabric to be soiled, but you have a water based ink or any other so, uh, soil, it will get soiled. So, it is a limitation. Viscose, what do you think about it? Is it similar to cotton? Yes, it is. In many senses, it is similar to cotton because cellulose. So, all those finishes or the limitations that we have seen in the cotton should be here as well. It will burn the way that burns, it hydrophilic, so it absorbs, it will not repel water. Uh, one of the difference obviously is a man made or a manufactured fiber, that is the difference plus the crystalline component in viscose would be expected to be less compared to what we see in cotton and therefore, the absorption capacity, the moisture again and other type of things will be seen to be different. The next important fiber that we have we can talk about is let us say wool. What is the chemistry of wool? Basically, these are these are protein. based fibers, so protein. Our hair also is similar to wool, it is called keratin. Sometimes they are also called polypeptides. If somebody asks this question, is wool, we understand it is protein or sometimes called polypeptide, is it a polymer? We never asked this question in cellulose, did we? Cellulose has a repeat unit which is called cellobiose and it re keeps repeating itself based on how much time the fiber grew or what have you done to it. So, there is a monomer or a repeat unit which is repeated every time. Can we call wool or in a way a protein a polymer? Can we call that a polymer? Actually, strictly speaking, Although a peptide link and the associated group is being repeated, but the amino acids in every such repeat is different and therefore, strictly it is not a polymer. So, what do we call it? You can call it a macromolecule, which is a large molecular weight. So, it is a macromolecule, but what it has? It obviously has peptide links and so it is hydrophilic, it makes various types of bonds. Let us see what kind of bonds a wool fiber would make, intermolecular bonds. What? Does it make hydrogen bonds? Yes, it does make hydrogen bonds does make van der Waal forces, they will have intermolecular van der Waal forces, of course, it will have intermolecular van der Waal forces also. So, hydrogen bonding will be there, you will have van der Waal forces, but interestingly wool would have 
intermolecular as well as intramolecular hydrogen bonds. So, if somebody may have taught you in a normal configuration, it can take a helical configuration, the molecule itself can take an helical consideration and hydrogen bonds can be here and hydrogen bonds can be formed here. So, inter and intra. So, you have van der Waals forces which are possible, you have inter and intra molecular hydrogen bonds which are possible. They also have covalent bond. Which one? So, you have intramolecular disulfide linkage or cysteine linkage. So, it is a covalent bonding, it has. I am not sure if you have heard about hydrophobic bonding. Have you ever heard about anything called a hydrophobic bond? Well, hydrophobic bond also has been defined as reciprocal hydrophilic effect. If there is lot of water around the molecules of this protein, then the hydrophobic part, because they do not like water, they like to come together. So, in wool you can see hydrophobic bonds also based on the environment if it is hydrophilic. If it is not a hydrophilic environment, they become redundant, but if there is a lot of hydrophilic environment, they have value. Now, all this is a part of a chemistry and if the chemistry is there, so their properties are also going to be working on them. Any speciality that we are looking at? Yeah, it has scales. Naturally, the wool is not a cylindrical smooth fiber, but it has got scales, you remember? And because of scales, there are certain properties which only wool will demonstrate and if you like them, it is fine. If you do not like them, you have to work for a finish which will do reverse of it. So, looking at the part of the chemistry that we said, would you think the crease recovery of this or fabrics made from wool are going to be better than cotton or inferior to cotton? Yeah, they are better because of this intermolecular cross linking, which is the covalent cross linking, is very important. The recovery is better. Even helical structure of the molecule is also better when you bend if the helical structure changes its shape, it like to come back to its helical form also. So, that way the recovery of this is better than let us say cotton. Burning compared to cotton, have you heard of if somebody catch, catches fire or something is burning people say well put some blanket on top of that well the blanket normally is associated with wool normally doesn't have to be so why do that you would not say go and surround or wrap him with a cotton sheet that may also work for some time but wool so in general wool is also naturally more flame resistant compared to cotton it does not mean that it will not burn, it will burn, but more resistant. Static charge development, do you think wool will have static development? Invariably no, but in very cold climates, cold conditions, almost every fiber can develop static charge. Static charge is then you rub something, 
or you come in contact and the charge gets stationed on the surface. So that's a limitation. So we had some advantage, some limitation. Water and soil repellency, it would require in case because it is a hydrophilic material. Is it biodegradable? Is it biodegradable? Yes, of course it is. So all the advantage, disadvantage you are talking about are there. In fact, if you may have heard that there is something called a moth, an insect which can eat wool. So you have to take special care, right? And so insect proofing, biodegradability, all that if you look at it, some people it is an advantage for the person who is a user, it will become limitation. Have you heard about something which we call as a felting? Felting? Felting is a phenomena where the woolen garments, if you wash them, you might find that there is an entanglement, the structure is not the way you want it. For example, if a woolen knitted sweater, if you wash in a washing machine, what you get at the end of the day does not look like the original sweater. So because the fibers get entangled, and so that is felting. So if you like felting, it is good. If you do not like felting, then it is bad. Of course, we will require soft and stiff finishes as well based on what you want. Normally, people like it to be softer generally. Uh, compared to two fibers, obviously, because of scales and a bit of a rigidness and so on and so forth may appear to be a little harsher. Silk. Compared to wool, chemical structure is more or less same. What is the difference? What is the difference? If you remember, this is also protein, but it does not have scale. It is a smoother material. In the intermolecular bonding, also there is a difference. Now, one of the differences there is no sulfur and therefore though no cysteine intermolecular cross link. But it is a protein fiber of a different kind, it is not called keratin, it is called sericin and fibroin. So there are two types of proteins which naturally are extruded by the silkworm. One of them is more useful which is called the fibroin which is also protein sericin which is called a gum, not useful as a fiber, it is removed, used for some other purposes, but it is removed. So there is difference between this. And so, if you look at the crease recovery of silk fabrics is much inferior compared to a wool, is that right? Flame resistant also is less than wool. Have you, did you expect it? Have you seen anything burning? You must have done some burning test on wool fibers, some burning test. It smells like burning beans, protein, hair, burning hair, smell, burning hair. Both of them will give similar smell, so you cannot identify, but you have to do chemical test to say there is no sulphur there, more or less. Flame resistance is not as good also. Let us look at synthetic fibers. Most of the synthetic fibers as we have mentioned before, all the four fibers that we talked about, they are thermoplastic, so they can be handled by heating. You can do certain changes which can be permanent, semi-permanent by heat, which the other three fibers that we just talked about or four fibers, they would not respond because they are non thermoplastics. Generally m m all of them are relatively more hydrophobic compared to the natural fiber that we talked about. So if hydrophobicity is an advantage is good, if it is a disadvantage then you have to do something about it. 
burning behavior, most of them burn pretty nicely. So if you are looking at a resistance to flaming, they are not the ones, the fiber which can be used. You have to do something about that. Static charge, because most of them are hydrophobic, most of them are prone to development of static charge. This is an important property by the way. If you have a nylon carpet on your any building, any you know, cinema hall or what have you and you lot of people keep walking around the same area, you might find it can develop a large amount of charge, very high voltage. You can see, see sometimes sparks so much and if electronic equipment is all around, then obviously it can damage that as well. So this is an interesting problem which is certainly with seen with the thick fibers. Grease resistance, have you experienced people who are wearing polyester, polyester cotton versus the one who are wearing cotton, which one would grease more as a user if you have experienced it? So obviously synthetic fibers have been seen to be more crease resistant the product, final product that is there. Water and soil repellency, well, they do not like to, they are hydrophobic. So they like the oily soil more, but we will differentiate between repellency versus wetting, repellency versus absorption of moisture, the two different things. But then obviously, because they are hydrophobic, they are dying, finishing and other processes will also be slightly more different. Biodegradability, this certainly is an interesting part in all of them. Simple reason, they were all synthesized that the polymer did not exist in nature and therefore, we do not have bio systems enzymes which can degrade them easily. So from stability point of view is an advantage, but from long term environment point of view it is a disadvantage. So people are working on these areas as well. So briefly this is what we talked about and so where do we stand if somebody asks this question. So all fibers have, will have some advantages, some disadvantages and if we closely look at the thing, their chemistry is definitely going to play a role in determining what the property they will finally show us and property in terms of some advantages and some disadvantages also. So what we are looking at the finishing as a process hopefully would have some solutions solutions to do, obviously any limitation which we can overcome. You must have heard this term called unit operations, so unit operations in chemical processing, just recall them, recall. Singeing, you know what it is, yeah, desizing, a necessary evil. So somebody put size on a yarn so that you can weave properly and so after weaving you want to remove it. Scouring in some fibers is required, not for all but at least some fibers is required, removing waxy material. Bleaching, mercerization, bleaching for cotton and definitely would be required, you can bleach other fibers as well, but that depends on which fiber you are talking about. Mercerization term is only used for cotton, uh, no other fiber will be mercerized, but they are unit operations. Of course, generally we have to dye all of them as another unit operation. You will have to, you may have to do some printing to put colorful designs to increase aesthetics, so yes, it is there. And the final process is finishing. You cannot sell almost anything to a user 
without doing some finishing treatment even if it's a simple finishing treatment you may have to do and therefore this is what is the most important chemical processing unit operation which we shall be talking in this course in little more detail. At this point maybe we can answer this question why finishing? Some of it you already know because the fibers and the fabrics made out of them or the garments made out of them will have some limitation as a carryover, some limitation as a carryover of the properties of the fiber that means which is obviously being governed by the chemistry. So one of the thing could be aesthetics that it would look good if you do some finishing. Yes, this could be one of the reasons why. For example, after washing you like to iron so that the surface becomes more smooth, smoother, right? So aesthetics could be one of the reasons why you may like to do finishing. The finishing term means this is almost the last process. You have finished the thing and you have given it to the end of the processing operation. Other important thing is why we would like to do any finishing treatment is to improve functional characteristics. Like you said it creases. So can we do something so that does not crease? It burns rapidly. Can we do something so it doesn't burn rapidly? Bacteria grows on it. Can we do something so that the bacteria doesn't grow on it, etc. So the more important role the finishing would play is to improve the functional characteristics of a textile. And depending upon what have you done, it is one process which adds quite a lot of value. If somebody sunferizes a fabric, it is puts there, it is sunferized. If you give an anti-shrink treatment, you write there is an anti-shrink treated fabric. Value addition is very high. So if you look at uh, the classification, general classification, we can talk about it in basically two ways. One is a mechanical finishing that you use on some kind of machine to do a certain improvement and which improves certain function or aesthetics. That is mechanical where you only use machines basically. Some of the examples we will take later. The other is chemical finishing. That means you are going to use a certain amount of chemical which is going to alter the properties in one way or the other, obviously in favorable to us. Of course, there is no doubt that machines are going to be integral part of all finishing processes. You can't apply a finish or do anything without a machine. Even if you are doing chemical finishing, some machines will be used even to apply the chemical effectively. So what are the mechanical finishes? We can look at it. Calendaring is one of them. We will not discuss all of them just now. We will just talk about calendaring. It is just like ironing, removing creases, sanferizing is very important finish which reduces the shrinkage of a fabric after washing, raising, in singeing we are removing the hairs, burning them, in raising by we are actually doing the reverse after the final finish we want to raise the hair fibers from the surface so that they look nice. Something similar is called swading, so swades you must have heard, it is a mechanical finish. Embossing, you may like to put a design, some kind of a design on the fabric, embossing. 
then there are chemical finishes where performance is going to be more important than the aesthetics. Crease resistant finish is one of them. Sometimes it is called wash and wear, sometimes also known as durable press, sometimes called wrinkle free. These are some of the terms which are used if you do a crease resistant finish. All such fibers which crease easily may be given a crease resistant finish. Water repellents depends if you are interested to repel water. What it means is that if you just walk in through a light rain and shake your garment, surface will be dry. Soil repellent, obviously everybody would want, almost every fiber would like to have a soil repellency treatment. Flame retardant, most of them, all household and the apparel which we wear would require a flame retardant treatment. They all burn. Some other fibers which are used in technical applications may not burn, but we are not talking about that. If they don't, they don't require. Anti static depends on what kind of a material that we are using. Soft stiff finishing if you want to give, anti-felting, the wool felts we talked about if you really require that, shrink resist wool, so that does not shrink, it is a different kind of thing, we will talk about it when we actually talk about wool, antibacterial, this is again a chemical finish because you have to use some chemical which will act against the bacteria. Insect repellent as we talked about moth proof, moth proofing or treatment against a moth is an insect. Then there are the finishing process where you remove polymer which is called de-weighting or you add a polymer or add any other uh, material which could be inorganic or organic to increase the weight of the fabric. So, weighting, de-weighting processes are also there by polishing. It is just like singeing, but after is like a finishing process done by enzymes. So, there we are. What have we learnt? That there are several unit operations and finishing is one of the final unit operation before you actually sell the fabric. We have also learnt the general objectives of finishing processes and that there are a large number of finishing treatment mechanical and chemical which can be given or are given before we market and sell the material or a product which you can see is a large enough uh, space. All of them are different have different chemistry and all of them will require different attention based on the chemistry of the fiber itself. So, before we meet again, maybe you like to do a few things yourself, revise from your old notes or go anywhere else, look at it. The chemical structures of various fibers, note them down on your notebooks or whatever material that you remember, starch, proteins, polyesters, nylons, polypropylene. Maybe you like to answer as to why cellulose can be used to make fibers either naturally we have cotton or other man-made fiber, but starch does not make fibers, you may like to know. You may like to recall, remember, revisit the manufacturing or production processes of the, some of the fibers which you like to finish at some stage so that you know the chemistry you recall that and so you say well yeah of course this requires or does not require. So that is all we will do today, uh, we will meet in the next class and take up uh, one of the finishing processes. Thank you.